In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to draw a closed vector diagram or a triangle of forces when we have objects that are in equilibrium or forces that are in equilibrium. So just to let you know, I did do a video on objects in equilibrium already. So if you missed that one, check out the playlist links in the description box below. But just as a quick recap, an object is in equilibrium if the net force acting on that object or at that point is zero which means the object is stationary or moving at a constant velocity. Take note how acceleration is zero if net is zero. And if this is the case, if we have a situation like this, then what we can do is we can arrange the vectors or rearrange the vectors that act on the object. And we can construct a closed vector diagram or a closed triangle or a triangle of forces. What's very important is that every corner of this triangle has a head to tail connection. So take note how head is touching tail in every single corner. There is no resultant vector. In this case, there's no F net vector. But how do you make sure that you construct this triangle correctly? How do you know which way the arrows must point? How do you know the angles? How do you know where to put them? That's what I'm going to be doing in this video, because if you do not know how to construct the triangle, you're not going to know how to do the calculation. So let's do this. So how I got the triangle in this example, which I did in the previous video is as follows. I know that there are three forces acting on my box. I know that my box is in equilibrium because the question will say something like that. It'll say the box is stationary or not moving or in equilibrium or the forces are in equilibrium, something along those lines. My three forces are as follows. I have the weight, which is acting straight down. As you can see over here, weight is acting straight down. We've got a rope and there's tension in that rope. And then we've got an applied force putting the box to the right. Now what we do is we start with one of the vectors and I recommend starting with weight. It's the easiest one to start with. So you can see over here on this diagram over here, I started with the weight. Then take a look at force applied. Which way is that force applied acting? Well, that force applied is putting the box to the right. So I drew an arrow pointing to the right just like that. And take note how my corners have head to tail touching all the time. Then my third arrow is a tension arrow. And this is the one where my students often struggle. They say, ma'am, how do you know which way the arrow points? I don't know how to do it. Well, take a look at this arrow, this, this tension, this rope. This rope is keeping the box in a stationary position where F net is zero. This rope is essentially pulling the box up and to the left. So it's pulling the box up and to the left. So basically something like that, up and to the left. So your arrow needs to point up and to the left. And that's why when you take a look at my diagram over here, T is going up and to the left. And this diagram over here is the same thing. But the reason it looks different is because on this diagram, I started with the weight, then I did F and then I did T. On this diagram over here, I started with the F, then I did weight, then I did T. So I just ordered the forces differently, but it's still creating a closed vector diagram, a triangle of forces. The angle between the different forces is the same. So how did I get the angles? Well, you can see that force applied is going that way and weight is going down. So force applied is going along the x-axis, weight is going along the y-axis. What is the angle between the x and the y-axis? 90 degrees. So the angle between W, which is weight, and F, force applied. So this angle here is 90. So in my closed vector diagram, it will also be 90. Then another thing to note is, do you see how this tension, this is the tension force, is pulling up and to the left? The angle that sits on top of that force, if I can put it like that, is 60. If you take a look, this is entering a corner over here. So these two angles over here, what would that add up to? 90. So if this is 60, underneath here should be 30. So that's why over here, underneath the tension line, I've got 30. And then how did I get the 60? Well, if I have 90, this is 90 degrees and this is 30. Remember, angle sum triangle, sum of angles in a triangle, 180 minus 90 minus 30. That gets me the 60 degrees, the last angle. If you look at this over here, this triangle over here, it's the same situation. Between force applied and weight, I've got a 90 degrees. Then if you look at the angle that they give you over here, they give you 60. They give you this angle over here, 60. And it's sitting on top of that tension line. Okay, it's sitting on top. So here's tension and the 60 is sitting on top. If that's 90 and that's 60, 
Using angle sum triangle, we can find the last angle, which is 30 degrees. Let's try another example, and I want you all to pause the video, see if you can get it correct, and then I'll go through it with you. What about this situation over here? So we've got a billboard, I've cut off the writing, and the billboard is suspended from the ceiling by a string. So here you can see they say string, they give me this 40 degree angle, and I've got an applied force pulling the billboard to the left. Now you should know that because the billboard has a mass, or the box or whatever has a mass, it has a weight. So how do we do this um, closed vector diagram or triangle of forces? Well, we would do it like this. I would start with weight, just because I always know that weight is going to point straight down. That is my weight. Then I would do my applied force next, because it's the second easiest vector, because it goes along the x-axis. And take note, it's pointing to the left. So I'm going, ooh, you're going to use a ruler when you do that. Not like me. There we go. I'm going to call this F. You can call it force applied. Basically, it's a force that is being applied to the billboard. Because they labeled it F, it's fine if you label it F. But just so you know, it's an applied force. Instead of labeling this weight arrow, W, you can, you can also label it FG, which is force of gravity. Okay, same thing. Then, take a look at the string. The string is pulling this box up and to the right. I hope that makes sense. It's pulling it up and to the right. Think of it like this. If that string wasn't there this box would fall that way, okay? Think about it, if that string wasn't there, this box would fall that way. Why that way? Because the weight's going down and the applied force is going to the right. So that box would fall that way. So why is it not falling that way? It's not falling that way because of the string which is pulling it up and to the right. Now, how do I do the angles? Remember, just like I did with the previous example, we can see that the force applied and the weights are acting at a 90 degree angle, which means that this angle over here is 90 degrees. Now, how do I fill in the other arrows? Now, listen to me carefully, grade 11s. Remember this over here, oh, I must label it, that is T for tension. If we have a string or a rope, that's a tension force in that rope, okay? So we call it T, you can write out tension, you can write FT, as long as you label it. It is very, 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 very important to label these diagrams, okay? So how do I get either of the other two angles? Remember, we need two to three angles in order to do the calculations. If you look at the tension, tension is going up and to the right, that is this um, rope over here. If I have to draw an arrowhead on that force, do you see that this 40 degree angle is the angle between the tension force and the horizontal, in other words, the roof, okay? So it's the angle between the horizontal and the roof. So it will not be this angle over here because that angle, the one that I just drew in there with a the dot, that would be this angle over here. That would actually be this angle over here. So how do I get, where, if that's 40, where is that on my diagram? Well, technically, it's outside of my triangle. Technically, that 40 degrees is over here. So basically, I'm drawing in a roof as if it was there. There's the roof. There's the 40 degrees. But what we do know is that these two angles here together must give me 90 degrees. Think about it like this. If I have to draw weight in over there, here's the roof. These two angles here must give me 90. So what would this angle be over here? Well, if they must give me 90 together, and that's 40, then I hope you can all see that this angle here must be 50 degrees. And if that angle is 50 degrees, so that 40 is not part of the triangle, I can erase it. If that angle is 50 degrees, how do we work out this third angle here in the bottom? Well, the sum of angles in a triangle add up to 180. So we say 180 minus 90, which is 90, minus 50. So this angle over here would be 40 degrees. I hope that makes sense to you. Remember, you could have drawn your triangle the other way. So you could have done if applied first, then weight, and then tension. Do you see how your triangle looks slightly different? But this angle here is still 90. This angle here would be 40. Look at which way the arrow is pointing. Look at which way the arrow is pointing here. Here's the arrowhead. You see the 40 is above the line here. The 40 is above the line over here. And if that's 40, this one over here must be 50. 
What about the situation over here? Now let me read it to you, it's a little bit small. So we have a diagram, one end P, this is P, is of a rigid beam PQ, so this is Q over here, is fixed to the wall, we've got an inelastic rope, which is fixing it to the wall at R. So we've got P, Q, R, this angle over here is 35 degrees. We've got beam, so this is the beam, P, Q is the beam, and at Q we've got a little mass hanging over there. Okay, so we've got a rope, we've got a mass hanging over here, and we've got a beam. How would we draw our triangle of forces or our closed vector diagram in this situation? They want us to consider that point Q is in equilibrium, okay? So it says here, Q, your question will say Q is in equilibrium, or this point over here is in equilibrium. So think about this point over here, which forces are acting on that point? Well, we've got a weight force acting straight down, that's W. Ma'am, how do you know that there's a weight acting at Q? Let me erase what I drew over here. You can see over here we've got a weight there, a little mass acting at Q, this is Q. What else is acting at Q? Look at the beam. Now this is very important. This is not a rope. That rope is not pulling Q towards it. The beam is pushing Q away. So think of it like this. If that beam had to break, which way would this box fall? This box would move towards the wall, right? It would crash into the wall. And why would it do that? Because the beam is pushing that box that way. So we've got an arrow going this way and we can call this force applied because it's an applied force or you can call it force of beam and then look at our, the tension force in the rope so this is my tension force it's a rope the rope r is pulling q up and to the left up and to the left again think of it if this rope had to snap the box would move that way why because r the rope is pulling the box up and to the left so this would be the tension Again, the weight and the beam are 90 degrees to one another. So that angle over there is 90 degrees. Then the angle between the beam and my RQ. So look here, between my beam and between RQ. Do you see, if I had to draw an arrowhead in here, it would be like that. And then this one would be like that. That angle between them is 35. So this must be 35. And then how do I find my last angle? Remember you say 180 minus 90 minus 35 and we get 55 degrees because the angles must add up to 180. Now the reason why we need to know how to draw our triangle of forces is because we need to answer questions where we solve for tension, where we solve for applied force. For example, in this example we had the weight and we had to solve for the other two. You need a triangle of forces with your angles in order to do this. We can use trigonometry. So I hope that helps you learn how to draw the triangles. In upcoming videos, I will do exam level questions. I will practice more. So you want to stay tuned for that. Just one last remark from my side for this video. And this is a teacher tip. If you have a situation such as a diagram where you have two ropes connected to an object. So let's pretend you have an object like this and there's a rope pulling it that way and a rope pulling it that way. When you draw and then there's weights pulling it down, when you draw your triangle of forces, you cannot label both arrows T. Because the reason why is because if you label them both T, then what you're telling me is that the forces in both of those ropes is the same. They have the same tension force, and we don't know if that's true. It's more than likely true that the tensions are different. So you have to call one T1 and T2, or tension X, tension Y. Look at your diagram and label, label accordingly. I will see you all in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. More Vector videos in the playlist in the description box. Bye, everybody.